good afternoon and warm greetings from the kandalu shala an institution dedicated for higher learning and research in inch in indian wisdom we welcome you all to the national lecture series of lecture series on indian intellectual traditions today we are very fortunate to have with us an, an eminent scholar of international repute professor arun ranjan misra of vishwa bharati university sandiniketan west bengal to deliver the 50th edition of national lecture series of kandalu shala let me now invite the master of ceremony for today's section dr v s vanaja who is the assistant professor of vimala college trishu over to dr v vanaja Uh, thank you sir i invite dr punima ji assistant professor sahitya shri shankaracharya university of sanskrit regional center etmano for invocation madam please apurvam yad vastu prathayati vina karana kalam jagat grav prakhyam निजरसभराख्योपाख्याख्यम विजयते Uh, thank you dr purnima for your beautiful uh, invocation uh, dear teachers scholars and uh, friends from various parts of the country and abroad a warm good evening to one and all we gather here for the 15th lecture of a national lecture series on indian intellectual tradition 2022 organized by kantalur shala an institution for higher learning and research in ancient indian wisdom today we have a great scholar to deliver the 15th lecture on indian aesthetics and the roots of pratyabhigna doctrine the lecture will be delivered by the great scholar professor arun ranjan mishra professor and head of the department of sanskrit vishwabharati university shantiniketan west bengal uh, Dr. Mishra passed his MA in Sanskrit from Uttal University in 1982 with a specialization in classical literature and MPhil in 1985 by the University of Pune and later the degree of PhD in 1988 by the University of Pune for the thesis the Nyaya concept of cause and effect relationship. Professor Mishra is one of the national advisors of Sahitya Academy New Delhi. for the academy award in sanskrit executive board member of all india oriental conference in the two consecutive years 2015 to 16 and 17 to 18 life member of drig bharati allahabad indian intellectual tradition pune founder general secretary and life member of eastern india oriental conference bhubaneswar professor mishra has been awarded by vyas bharati sammanam in 2015 maharshi Vyasadev National Research Institute Vedam Vyasa Raudkela Odisha Best Citizen Award in the year 2014 presented by International Publishing House New Delhi Vikram Kalidasa Puraskar on Traces of a Meghadudam in Bhamahas Kavya Lankara by Kalidasa Academy and Vikram University Ujjain Shraddharanadi Prize on Poetology of a Brahma Vaivarta Purana at the All India Oriental Conference Jammu in the year 2006 Mrs Annapurna and Dr R K Sharma prize on modernity and contemporaneity in sanskrit writings at the All India Oriental Conference Varanasi in 2004 Sahitya Patra Puraskar for poetry by the uh, Berhampur University Orissa in 2001 senior research fellowship at the Gandhi Center of Science and Human Values Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan Bangalore in the year 1989 Shiksha Gaurav Samman by Alumni FM Autonomous College Balasore India in 2008 Professor Mishra was a guide for 18 research scholars for their PhDs and five research scholars for their MPhil degrees He has completed a minor research project on Nalanlinas in modern Sanskrit poetry at postmodern sign 
And um, he has published 20 books of uh, research and more than 100 research papers at the national and international conferences, workshops, etc. His creative works in Sanskrit uh, include a collection of 64 postmodern Sanskrit poems and also uh, more than 10 works in Oriya. Dear sir, welcome to this uh, program and uh, I uh, invite you uh, for the uh, uh, lecture and uh, the presidential address uh, of this today's program will be uh, delivered by Professor P.C. Murli Madhavan sir, Director in Chief Kantalu Shala. A warm welcome to you sir uh, to this program. The presentation of citation uh, to Professor Mishra will be done by uh, my dear friend, Dr. Nirmala V, Sanskrit teacher, Government Higher Secondary School, Potasheri. A warm welcome to uh, Dr. Nirmala. Dr. Ajitan P.I, faculty of Kantalu Shala, will deliver the word of thanks and welcome uh, Dr. Ajitan to this program. Uh, many scholars are uh, here to attend the program. All are cordially invited. Uh, and also, all are invited for the scholarly discussion after the lecture. Once again, a warm welcome to you, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Arundranjan Mishra, uh, to this uh, our um, 15th lecture uh, on Indian intellectual tradition by Kantalu Shala. Welcome you, sir. Welcome you all. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. P. S. T. Murli Madhavan, sir. Sir, please. Yes. Namaskar. Shrudis Murdi Buranam Alayam Karuna Alayam Namami Bhagavad Pada Sangaram Loka Sangaram Aruta proud Havega Pravijita Bavanam Tunga Tungam Turangam Salem Nilam Vasana Karadala Villa Satkanda Kodanda Danda Ragat Vesha Dinana with Hamburga Patali, Piti Krat Buddha Parta Kuruan Akhedali Lam Padilla Sadumana Kanane Mama Kine Most respected the chief guest of the day, Professor Arun Ranjan Mishra from Shanti Nagadan University. My colleagues in the Kandro Shala, Dr. Vanaja, Dr. Purnima, Dr. Nirmala, Dr. Ajidan, uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar, uh, Pradeep Jyoti, and the executive members of the Kandalu Shala and the general body members of the Kandalu Shala Sapha and uh, my colleagues and other colleagues in the Kandalu Shala. I welcome one and all to this uh, scholarly assembly where we are going to discuss a very significant topic on Indian aesthetics that to related with Pratibhitnaya philosophy of Kashmir. We are very happy and we are fortunate that Professor Arunanjan Mishra accepted our invitation to deliver the lecture. The lecture will be Indian aesthetic on Indian aesthetics uh, and uh, the, the roots of Pratibhitnaya doctrine. Actually, it is a matter of uh, great pleasure, so to say, that uh, we got a scholar of high order. A scholar means not simply scholar. He is a Shastrakara and a Sahityakara put in one. Two in one. Just Naishathakara told that uh, Sahitya Sukumara Vastuni Dhritanyaya Greha Grenthile Tarkeva Mai Samithadari Samam Leelayate Bharati. We heard about this several times. We have discussed also. So, the 
the intellectual exercises on various Shastra subjects, including Nyaya Shastra. Professor Adonijan Mishra is the, basically he is, he is a great scholar of Navinyaya. So, and his uh, special capacities in the field of creativity, both are wonderful experiences for the Sanskrit scholars at national level and even at the global level. So, and uh, Professor Arunjan Mishra, from the very beginning of Kandalu Shala, he used to attend our programs. Mostly, he used to uh, participate in deliberations in several lectures. And our first lecture has started with Professor Arindam Chakravarti, another great Nayayika, and a Vedandin from Honolulu University, USA. And from start from that very one year back, when Kandalu Shala came into existence, instituted in the uh, month of December 2020, from there, regularly, there were several lectures. Every month, we have three series of lectures, one on international platform and other two lectures on national lectures on uh, Indian intellectual tradition and also um, uh, Vedic exegesis and Vedic ep epistemology. So these uh, scholarly endeavors are going on. And... Uh, all the lectures so far we have we have conducted they are fruitful they could create a momentum in the field of philosophy and also in aesthetics and in theater also now uh, we have, at present today we are uh, uh, going to have a discussion on the lecture we are going to hear from the very horse mouth from, from Professor Arun, Arun Ranjan Mishra on Indian aesthetics and on Pratipitnya philosophy. As you know, Lord Shiva, Shiva's title is Nadaraja, his famous Tandava Nritta and the first two Rupagas enacted at Kailasa might indicate at the roots of Natya and aesthetics in Shaivism. However, Kashmir Shaivism appears to be a great source for both Sadharanikarana or generalization initiated by uh, Bhattanayaka and detailed by Abhinava Gupta later might have its roots in the theory of ultimate identity between Pati and Pashu. The spiritual Pratibhitnya also seems to have provided to the discovery of uh, Stai Bhava as Rasa and of the suggested meaning in the form of ananda in the psychic and literary levels respectively. The concept of uh, ananda in aesthetics, so to say, uh, may clearly be an offshoot of the Kaulavada. Bharata surprises uh, everybody by using the word trika Many a time, though it is different in connotation from the Kashmir, um, Kashmirian Trika, this is difference is there. But Trika philosophy dominated the interiors of Indian aesthetics after the arrival of Abhinav Gupta, who had in him the combination of both. We know that he studied Krama and Trika from Bhuviraja the great doctor of Dhuni from Induraja and the, the real, the text Nati Shastra from Bhatta Tauta, his own teacher. The Kashmirian idea of cleansing of the Anava Mala, Karma Mala and Mayika Mala gave rise to the notion of Satodrega and Avarana Bhanga. These are the two uh, main aspects main characteristics of uh, Abhinavgupta philosophy of uh, Rasa realization. 
So this Satodrega and Avarana Bhanga in Indian aesthetics. A detailed deliberation of this subject, of this topic, uh, will be uh, done, and that will be what is going to be delivered by Professor Arun Ranjan Mishra. His thoughts that will be an, an intellectual feast for the scholars, those who are assembled here, those who are participating in this uh, Zoom platform. I, with these observations, I beg to remain. Uh, I, uh, I, I actually, I take this opportunity to uh, congratulate Professor Arunanjan Mishra for his all his achievements in the field of uh, several achievements have been already told by the uh, the scholar who extended the wel uh, the welcome speech. So I am not uh, repeating it. Uh, all those uh, here. The, she has mentioned only a few among his achievements. I congratulate him as a scholar of uh, uh, great achievements in the field of Indian, uh, in, in Sanskrit in general, and in Navinaya, and also in Indian aesthetics um, in particular. With these uh, observations, I back to remain. Thanks. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, for such an in-depth uh, presidential address. Uh, now I uh, invite uh, Professor Mishra to deliver the lecture. A warm welcome to you, sir. Sir, please. Namaste. <coughs> Om Sudha Samudranta Hridhanamani Dvipa Sangridha Vilvata Vimadhan Padruma Kalpa Kadamba Kantara Vasapri Ekriti Vasapri Sarva Lokapri Devi Bhyamu Devi Tubhyam Namo Devi Tubhyam Namo Esteemed Professor Murli Madhavanji, the Director in Chief of Kantlur Sala, Kerala. My friend, and who is Professor of Hindi in Vishwabharati, he is also present. My uh, Professor Anath Misra from oh. Hindi Department of Hindi. Good. Dr. My friend Dr. Sadanand Das from Leipzig University, Germany. And Dr. Banaja, Dr. B. Nirmala, Dr. Purnima, and, and executive and general body members of Kandal Ursala. I offer my pronoun to everybody. Uh, in the beginning, let me confess I'm entering into Pratyavya a long, long time. <laughs> this was the field in which I have no specialization. But I have seen it and I have spoken in different occasions, of course. But uh, I don't claim any specialization in this subject. That is number one I wish to mention from the beginning itself. Secondly, this is a hardcore philosophy and I am uh, going to apply it to Indian aesthetics. Therefore, I may be able to speak fluently. I may be allowed to read some portions also. Uh, that okay. I would do because generally I speak, but uh, today I don't think that uh, considering the very valuable data and uh, many other things which are not uh, always in touch uh, by me, so I may be uh, allowed to read out something in some cases. <clears throat> the topic is Indian aesthetics and the roots of uh, the Pratyavigyan doctrine. And uh, as we know, it uh, always relates to our holy land, the heavenly land, Kashmir. And uh, this uh, here, it is here, a kind of Savism developed in the post 18th century AD, and which is uh, uh, famous with the name of Kashmir Savism. Uh, it can be divided into three sections. Agama Shastra, Spanda Shastra, and Pratyavigya Shastra. Agama Shastra is its tantric part. There are many, many tantra texts. 
अराउंड सिक्सटी फोर तंत्र टेक्स्ट आर देयर एंड मालिनी विजय उत्तर तंत्र व्हिच आई हैव केप्ट विथ मी इज द मोस्ट फेमस वन देन इट्स पंद शास्त्र इज डीलिंग विथ द क्रिएशन थ्रू द डिजायर ऑफ द सुप्रीम बीइंग through spanda only the whole universe is created and again dissolved and pratyavigyan shastra can be called as a spiritual epistemology of kashmiri shaivism and its subjects are pratyavigyan spanda trika and krama pratyavigya as you know it's a philosophical part of kashmiri shaivism spanda as i said it's the creation through the desire of the supreme being and trika deals with uh, the same supreme being with epithets like uh, para apara and para para we can say it is a bank of knowledge for all the uh, saiba gamas to justify uh, their uh, kaula bama pratyavigya and spanda they refer to this trika and they, it's a huge huge bank of knowledge and krama is uh, in other words it is called kali naya or devi naya because kali is the supreme being here in this system in this part of uh, kashmiri shaivism krama and uh, it refers it uh, subscribes to advaita vada so in this way its subjects are varied and vast but one thing is extraordinary that is kashmiri shaivism is a very interesting conglomeration of uh, nigama and agama they subscribes to subscribe to vedas and also they have uh, agamas agamic vast agamic literature therefore it's a very beautiful combination of nigama and agama we can say uh, we are very fortunate that uh, such a type of uh, uh, branch of uh, philosophical religion uh, is uh, there Uh, with us in indian soil and history of pratyavigya can we can say that it starts from uh, the beginning of uh, first half of uh, 8th century ad uh, the king uh, lalita, lalita ditya of kashmir brought atrigupta from kanauj he was a great pandit and uh, a saivite uh, in uh, 740 and uh, there another saivite was also already there his name was uh, sangama ditya he is the 15th of uh, the trambaka line trambaka is the first uh, uh, shaiva philosopher and uh, there are uh, around 19 uh, persons uh, uh, are there in the line and he is the 15th one 19th uh, um, being the uh, philosopher somananda who uh, created shiva drishti that's a very uh, very powerful Uh, treatises in kashmiri shaivism now after that uh, when atrigupta arrives then in that lineage vasugupta also appears and he discovers uh, shiva sutra people say that uh, uh, lord shiva gave him directly and some people say it was there in a um, in an inscription and he collected it all that and uh, shiva sutra is the main treatise of the, the spanda branch uh, of uh, uh, shaiva manujim which is kashmiri shaivism and uh, he also wrote uh, spanda karika and uh, then bhatta kallata he is the son and uh, student of uh, this vasugupta vasugupta who was the author of shiva uh, drishti uh, shiva sutra uh, author of compiler of shiva sutra and this bhatta kallata who is his son was his son he wrote uh, spanda karika and spanda sandoha perhaps spanda karika is only available on spanda sim and uh, his contemporary somananda wrote a shiva drishti which is equally a very famous and powerful and resourceful treatise in this uh, uh, system especially in the branch of pratyavigya and uh, his son and disciple utpala deva uh, 875 to uh, 925 ad we can say he wrote pratyavigyan karika this is a very important book 
uh, in uh, a rather pioneering book published in uh, Pratyavigna philosophy. Uh, around 980, he uh, did it with a Bibri of his own. So Bibriti commentary of his own was also added to it. In this way, we can say that uh, from the beginning of uh, uh, the first half of 8th century to the end of uh, or uh, to the half of 10th century, uh, uh, India witnessed a great uh, uh, rise of a great religion and philosophy, Kashmir is Saivism, and uh, we can say Pratyavigya philosophy, or we can also say it Saiva Monism, all those things. And uh, Abhinava Gupta about him will detail afterwards because uh, he is the person on which we wish to focus mainly because he contributed a lot to combine both aesthetics and uh, Pratyavigya doctrine. And uh, therefore, we'll uh, uh, concentrate on him more. And he wrote uh, many books, including Laghvi and Brihati Bhimarsini on Pratyavigya Karika of Utpala Deva. And uh, Utpala Deva's son, Lakshmana Gupta, was uh, the teacher of uh, Abhinava Gupta in the branches of Pratyavigya and Krama. We all know Bhatta Lullata. The moment uh, Shiva, uh, Rasa Sutra comes, Bhatta Lullata Utpadivadin will come first of all. And all these people, all those interpreters were Kashmirians. And uh, Bhatta Lullata was a hardcore uh, uh, Manish Saivite, means Kashmir Saivite. He not only wrote a uh, commentary on Natasastra, but he also wrote a Bibruti on uh, Spanda Karika, rather of uh, Bhatta Kallata. Bhatta Kallata wrote uh, Spanda Karika, Bhatta Lullata wrote uh, a commentary on it. So in this way, uh, in short, in short, it's a very, very vast literature, Pratyavigyan literature. Uh, we uh, wish to proceed ahead. Uh, we may in the beginning just say something about the books of uh, the treatises of Abhinava Gupta, who is a uh, pioneering philosopher of Pratyavigyan doctrine, we can say, because in the sense, he really popularized and he adopted many disciples who subscribed to this uh, philosophy and uh, wrote also, he wrote uh, a number of uh, treatises on that. His father, Narsingha Gupta, was a grammarian. He taught him grammar. Then uh, uh, Bhamanatha taught him Dvaita Tantra, Bhutiraj Brahma Vidya. Then uh, uh, Bhutiraj Tanaya taught him Dvaita Dvaita Saivagama. Lakshmana Gupta, Gupta, his father, also taught him Krama and Trika, and Bhatta Induraja uh, taught him Dhunyaloka, Bhatta Tauta, we all know, taught him Natasastra, and Sambhunata, he taught him Kaulagama. And uh, he has uh, in total around 41 uh, treatises, uh, uh, like uh, Tantra Loka, Pratyavigya, Vimarsini, Malini Vijaya, Bhartikam, Malini on Vijaya Tantra, and then uh, Paro Trinsika Vivarana, it's a Triko Sastra, a commentary on the concluding verses of Rudra Jamala, this Paro Trinsika Vivaran, and uh, as on uh, six, uh, 64 Advaita Tantras, uh, he also referred to them here, and uh, Tantrasara, Tantra Patadhanika, uh, these two are the uh, uh, summarization of Tantra Loka, his own treatise. Then Dhanyaloka Lochana, Abhinav Bharati, very famous amongst us. Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita Artha Sangraha. Then Paramartha Sara. Here the essential principles of Trika Shastra is uh, uh, mentioned here. Then Ishwara Pratyavigya Vibruti Vimarsini. An exposition on, uh, of Vibruti written by Utpala Charya on his own Pratyavigya Karika, as we said earlier. Then Ishwara Pratyavigya Vimarsini. It is, its other name is Laghvi Vimarsini on Pratyavigya Karika. Then Paryanta Prakashika. This was uh, uh, rather discovered and published by V. Raghavan in 1951. This is a summary of the principle of uh, Trika Shastra uh, based on Kula system. So in this way, there are many things uh, he has uh, contributed to this uh, uh, Kashmiri Saivism, to Pratyavigya doctrine and also to Indian aesthetics. So if we wish to 
see a point where combination is there where the both streams converge perhaps that is point of uh, uh, this person this uh, this they both both the branches converged in uh, uh, abhinava gupta uh, in uh, in tantra loka there are many many topics including rituals there are many many things but uh, most uh, famous of them are uh, of uh, literature and poetics and uh, many philosophy like avasavada are uh, the uh, portions of this then he is uh, in his paryanta prakashika he says there are 37 categories not th- 36 as in prati- pratyavigya uh, see i uh, i just uh, professor mulli madhavan was also saying just now uh, that uh, uh, there are words like words uh, make, uh, occurrences of the word trika even in natya shastra though in different uh, meaning and here also we find there is a uh, means uh, difference of opinion on how many chapters are there in natya shastra natya shastra itself declares that it has 36 chapters but actually in many places we find 37 chapters same thing also occurs here how it all happens i do not know but uh, here in paryanta prakashika there are 37 categories means tattva in uh, kashmiri shaivism accepted but actually in uh, pratyavigya it is uh, 36 just the uh, difference was there regarding natya shastra same is the case here uh, regarding pratyavigya however another very beautiful thing he has written ghata karpara kulaka vibruti this is on a on the philosophy of poetic freedom then uh, another uh, very interesting treatise it is not yet published it is bimba pratibimba vada and uh, this should be studied to not only to understand the mainstreams of pratyavigyan doctrine but also to understand how we release rasa and how we get visranti while seeing a cinema or uh, natak or drama therefore it, this that is a process of bimba pratibimba only in that way uh, we get uh, the hints there and uh, actually whole monism including pratyavigyan philosophy accepts uh, uh, three kinds of impurities as uh, professor mulli madhavan uh, said just now uh, and these three if they are warded off then our rasa pratiti or uh, releasing of rasa happens and it happens in a very uh, alaukik way transcendental way or a spiritual way at least we can say so these three impurities or malas are anava mala karma mala and mai anava mala is innate ignorance consisting in the loss of universality means a person cannot identify himself with the general cause with the character on screen or stage he cannot uh, Uh, feel others uh, pain and pleasure that faculty is absent it is because of anava mala many of us we don't have this mala of course fortunately and then uh, karma mala karma mala is a form of uh, 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 indefinite and limitless desire this uh, our mind and our soul is uh, covered with impurity because we desire so many things and uh, they are being called as karma mala then mai kamala uh, is of uh, the nature of uh, psychological limitations and uh, it consists of five limiting conditions on a person kala vidya raga niyati and kala there are uh, very very uh, means uh, uh, we can say very secret things and uh, many things are to be uh, discovered on their nature yet because all the treatises have not come and whatever has come up their sentences are very terse without a teacher it's difficult to understand and uh, uh, okay because of these three malas a kind of ignorance we have and because of that we are not being able initially we are not being able to release rasa uh, on the stage uh, which is being solved from the stage but this ignorance is not really the absence of knowledge always rather it is the limitation of knowledge limited knowledge we can say 
about what it's the limited knowledge about the self and the universe and uh, self realization is self recognition or pratyavigya is the only way ultimately where we get the release just as amsa devadatta or soham or i am the i am this dushyanta if this kind of uh, self recognition all self realization come up that is called pratyavigya uh, philosophy uh, we have a title avigyana sakuntalam the word avigyana itself is a pratyavigya doctrines word and the sakuntala which dushyanta feels the sakuntala whom i met in the third act of avigyana sakuntalam is this sakuntala in the act 7 so that kind of pratyavigya was enacted through avigyana sakuntalam by kalidasa kalidasa was a great sabai sabai and uh, he, people say that uh, he uh, spent his uh, uh, time studenthood in kashmir itself therefore deep uh, uh, influence of kashmiri saibism or at least using saibism is being seen on him in his literature also and uh, this uh, what is the nature of this pratyavigya when dushyanta arrives on the stage and because of his uh, anubhava etc gradually a samajika is getting identified with him and uh unknowingly he feels he himself is dushyanta he discovers that he himself is dushyanta so the sukha and dukha of dushyanta are directly uh, uh, released by him that kind of thing happens but is it just a direct cognition pratyaksha that i am this uh, uh, dushyanta or it is just a simple recollection uh, recollection smriti just he remembers that he is i am this dushyanta beyond that avinagupta argues that beyond that also there is other things here and beyond these two objects at least the novelty of recognition lies in realization of identity uh, the cognition of identity the memory or recollection of identity they both are different from the realization of identity pratyavigya philosophy serves offers or fetches the realization of identity and uh, this identity we can say a new experience altogether and it all happens not only in the philosophical parlances but also uh, in dramaturgical parlances and we enjoy whatever is served from the stage through our pratyavigya experience only the through the uh, experience of uh, uh identity through the realization of identity now i i don't uh, think that i am expected to speak on rasa sutra and what uh, different inter- interpreters uh, said on that because although they also come in the line but uh, they are quite popular so i am leaving them out here and there i may refer to them but i am not going into them but uh, the things which uh, are not very much known in the realm of uh, uh, this um, rasa sutra and its discussion i may try to touch upon them and one of uh, them is abhasa vada the uh, in ishwara pratyavigya vimarsini uh, this abhasa vada is uh, propounded by uh, abhinav gupta and through this abhasa vada only we get spiritual realization and we also get uh, uh poetic delight or rasa realization of rasa and uh, abhasa abhasa is not a pratibhasa just as sankracharya said uh, that um, um, paramarthika satta vyavaharika satta pratibhasika satta abhasa is not a pratibhasa here abhasa is here manifestation so the theory of manifestation we can say rather it is uh, being said about the soul and soul is self effulgent the very effulgence of soul generates a kind of abhasa 
and uh, that avasa gives us spiritual delight and poetic delight and uh, this effulgence is the nature of soul which is godly by nature again and it has its own freedom regarding effulgence means uh, it doesn't depend on anything else it is uh, uh, we can say uh, self effulgent so prakasa so prakasa is a naik term of course but it is quite uh, understandable so prakasa self effulgent and uh, uh, because of uh, this self effulgent not depending others for its illumination and uh, therefore it has a different capacity a separate capacity of giving joy when uh, through the uh, drama etc when there is avarana bhanga as sir was saying when there is avarana bhanga avarana bhanga is more popularized by panditraj jagannath in rasagangadhar and because of this avarana avarana bhanga this effulgence comes out and it not only comes out it also reflects itself whereby the spectator gets a great spiritual delight which is being equated with the delight of brahman of realizing brahman so it is not that the whatever is going on the stage that gives us delight in that way then somebody may ask if this karuna rasa being served on stage how can we get delight therefore it whatever is being given on the stage through vacharth will not cause us give us delight directly rather it will make a kind of avarana bhanga it will uh, generate sattva udreka and then the self effulgence of the self will delight us because we will discover its illumination and uh, not only that whenever the soul is manifest uh, or whenever it is unmanifest in both the stages states it it is always self effulgent it is so prakasa therefore it has a joy always reserved with it the main thing is to break the coconut shell and get that in iswara pratyabhikya vimarsini uh, abhinav gupta says iswara swabhav atma prakasate tavat tatra cha asya swatantryam swatantryam iti na kenachit bapusa prakasate तत्र अप्रकाशात्मना प्रकाशते प्रकाशात्मना प्रकाशते फॉर आत्मा इज ईश्वर स्वभाव इट्स गॉडली बाय नेचर एंड इट्स ऑलवेज प्रकाशते तावत एवर एफलजेंट एंड देर फॉर इट इज इंडिपेन्डेंट एज फार एज इल्युमिनेशन इज कन्सर्न एंड इट्स नॉट दैट फिजिकली समेर इट कम्स फिजिकली सम इल्युमिनेशन विल कम फ्रॉम द स्टेज and it will uh, illumine the soul or it will uh, in, uh, cause our joy it's not the case rather whether prakasa or aprakasa in the both ways it is self effulgent and ready with joy and we have just to discover it therefore the pratyabhigya system is an exposition of uh, abhasavad abhasavad is a very secret and very valuable uh, trait in pratyabhigya doctrine and uh, it shows how the world experience is a manifestation of universal self the total world experience not that when we meditate and uh, or when we worship or when we uh, sit before a stage or uh, cinema screen at that time it works it not that not the case rather it is a manifestation of universal self and it is always there and this universal self is termed as maheshwara and maheshwara what does it mean it means all inclusive universal consciousness maheshwara in uh, pratyabhigya philosophy is being said as all inclusive universal consciousness of the or the self therefore world experience is also real real it's not uh, brahma satyam jagan mithya no here uh, this doctrine doesn't accept that it says world is also real for the simple reason that uh, world is nothing but uh, the actualization a kind of actualization of this all inclusive universal consciousness and uh, therefore they differ here from the advaitins and uh, abhasavada is taken by abhinav gupta to dramaturgy 
also. And uh, why he says that? In order to present the enactment as a real experience. Many of the interpreters said that uh, the total experience is... No, he claimed that this is real because uh, it works in a process of avasa. Therefore, it is real. And the universalization or sadharani karana is a, that it is real. Is a very great proof that it is real. And it is a sadharani karana is also a natural process of the self. It can communicate, it can mingle with anybody, any object. In, with the insensate object also, the self can uh, generalize itself or mix itself up. And uh, moreover, self is prakasa vimar samaya. Prakasa, we said, self effulgent And it is also vimar uh, samaya. Vimar samaya means uh, it is very nicely explained in Panditra Jagannath's book, Rasagangathara, and where uh, quick and uh, many, many things, uh, power to think and differentiate. That is Vimarsa. And uh, Tantra Loka says, Avinaguttas Tantra Loka, Sa Swatma Bhitto Viswachitram Unmi Layati. So the self itself reflects the Viswachitra. Whatever is going on stage, it gets reflected and knowingly it gets reflected so that uh, it can say to the uh, soul or to the mind. And uh, in Tantra Loko, in another place, um, chapter, verse 3, he says, Nirmale mukure jadvad bhanti bhumi lotadaya. Just as the earth and creepers, etc., uh, they, they get uh, reflected on mirror. Omisra tadvad ekasmin chinnathe visvabruttaya. So chinnatha is the supreme being the universalized consciousness. On him, the whole total vrutta of the Vishwa, Vishwa vrutta anukarana, the, uh, whatever Bharat was saying, the total Vishwa vrutta affairs of the world is reflected on Chinnatha, the supreme being. And the same is the case for Samajika. The whatever is going on before him is getting reflected in him. And he accepts it. And uh, because why he accepts it? Because uh, when Raja and Tamagunas are subsided, Raja's Tamobhyam Asprustang Manaha Sattva Miho Chyate. So when they both go, Sattva is uh, rising up. After the arousal of Sattva, the Mano Mukura is Nirmala. The mind's mirror is clear. And therefore, the reflection occurs. This Nirmalata. And the three mala I said about three kinds of impurities have their uh, internal collection, connection, spiritual connection uh, for the sections of spirituality for uh, dramaturgy also. And about this uh, nirmalata also uh, says some, somewhere else in Tantra Loka. He says, Nairmalyanta cha ati nibida sajati eka sangati hi swasmin abhedat vinnasya darsana kateva ba. Atyakta so prakasasya, not living out uh, the, with the so prakasatva, self effulgence. Nairmalyam tad guru ditam. Guru man, means uh, Bhattatauta. Bhattatauta defines Nairmalya in this way, the clarity in this way. So it is ati nibida sajati eka sangati. Whatever is there inside a kind of bhava, a similar thing is happening on the stage. Therefore, sajati eka sangati. And it, ha it happens very densely, intensely. So, ati nibida. And that nibida uh, proves the nirmala, the clarity of the mind. And in this way, uh, the Pratyavigya doctrine explains our uh, uh, experience, aesthetic experience, when we read a story or a poet or a drama or a cinema. Now, in this thing goes on. I will not go to interpretation, etc. All other things are trying to say in gist. And uh, there is also, while uh, a Samajika or an audience releasing rasa, what is its nature? And uh, as he refers to Bhattatauta always, he again goes to Bhattatauta 
and says that bhatta to to my guru says this is a kind of anubhyavasaya this realization this relic is a kind of anubhyavasaya anubhyavasaya means identical reaction when it is pratyabhigya when he is going samajiko is going to experience identity between himself and uh, uh, dusyanta therefore this is identical reaction uh, in nyaya shastra anubhyavasaya is uh, termed differently means uh, suppose i will say utter a sentence ghatam aham janami naikas uh, uh, give example of this sentence ghatam aham janami the knowledge that i am knowing this ghata the knowledge that i cognize this ghata is anubhavasaya but here the word anubhavasaya used by bhattatoto is a bit different he says anubhavasaya is anubhavanam even bharata has said i will come to that and uh, so it is identical reaction whatever is happening on stage there is identical reaction inside so there is really suppression and uh, this anubhavasaya is collected from bharata's phrase loka vritta anukarana nana bhavopa sampannam nana vasthan paratmakam loka vritta anukaranam atam etan maya kritam pratham adhyay similarly in the same pratham adhyay verse 120 he says sapta dvipanukaranam natyam etad bhavishyati here we have to see that uh, uh the word anukarana is present and uh, taking this uh, misunderstanding rather misunderstanding this uh, word anukarana sri sankuka was inspired to uh, present a theory of imitation chitraturagan nay and this chitraturagan nay the theory of imitation is being refuted by uh, uh, abhinav gupta and uh, the here the words like bhava in the in both the uh, verses of uh, bharata we get the words like uh, uh, bhava avastha etc and these words indicate something more than just imitation elsewhere also the phrase like anubhavana anukirtana can also be found uh, which confirm uh, which confirms natya as uh, more than imitation excuse me <laughs> and uh, these uh, there is a uh, another karika in the same chapter 1 of uh, nat shastra नैकाटी Uh, held that uh, rasa is neither enhancement upachita word is there uh, used by bhattatauta uh, when he presents his utpatti vada it is not uh, enhancement of sthai inside a samajika nor inference as uh, um, shri sanku ka said therefore it is just a kind of anubhyavasaya and uh, anubhyavasaya is anubhavana or anukirtana we can say so showing how a person behaves in a particular state of mind that is being presented which is anubhavana of bharata's phrase now uh, please remind me if i have running i am running shortage of time because thing is uh, very big and long anyway uh, but uh, i hope they are very interesting also when a spectator is identical uh, identified he also undergoes a process of anubhyavasaya so anubhyavasaya works in the samajika which uh, panditra jagannath says punah punah anusandhan atma in pratham anan itself he says karanam cha when he uh, says about the cause of lokottara ananda karanam cha the cause of lokottara ananda karanam cha tadavachinne bhavana vishesa punah punah anusandhan atma so this bhavana and punah 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 anusandhana 
type of thing is included in Bhattatautas uh, Anubhyavasaya. Now from Bharatas Anubhavana and Vishranti. Bharata also used uh, Vishranti in chapter 1. So, uh, Dukhartanam Samartanam Vishranti Jananam Natyam Etad Bhavishyati. So, Vishranti word is also there. Bharatas Anubhavana and Vishranti. They led uh, Bhattanayaka to discover the vaparas of Bhavakatva and Bhojakatva. Which became Sadharani Karana and Abhivandana or uh, Bhoga of Abhinavagutta, of course. But uh, this bhava is cognized through Anubhavasaya. And when this bhava is cognized or recognized, Avigyanta, or uh, then it is uh, the it gives the uh, pleasure or bliss of rasa. And it all happens in a tranquil state. When uh, man is disturbed by sattva and raja gunas, um, uh, raja and tamagunas, at that time this will not uh, occur. Only sattva is arisen and raja and tama, tamas, they are subsided. In that stage only uh, it will happen. Therefore, Abhinavagupta again says, Bita bigna pratiti grahyo bhava eva rasa. Rasa is nothing but bhava. But when Bita Vigna, when it is Bita Vigna Pratiti Grahya, a very short definition of Rasa he has given and very beautiful also and philosophically very strong. Bakya uh, uh, Kabyam, in that case, Rasa is there and Rasa and Kabya they are connected. But here Rasa is being defined in a very short definition and very handy definition. Now, uh, we'll come to another aspect of the uh, realization of uh, rasa or uh, the release of rasa, and that is that has uh, two parts chamatkaratva and bimarsatva. And uh, samvedana, uh, we can also add another thing. So, three uh, many, uh, many keywords are connected to the release of rasa chamatkaratva. Chamatkara Tattva, Vimarsa Tattva and Sambedana Tattva. And uh, as we said that uh, when a Samajika, an audience is releasing Rasa, he has a kind of consciousness free from all impediments. And that stage is called Chamatkara by Abhinagupta. And this he declares in his uh, famous Pratyavigya Vibhruti Vimarsini. And uh, that gives a kind of, he understands it too in, in terms of Sponda. And uh, Sponda is also, in other words, an essential part of the uh, wonderful bhoga which uh, the audience has now. And he says, Bhunjanasya adhuta bhogatmaka Sponda vistasya. Means a, a Samajika, an audience is being described in terms of uh, Sponda. Adhuta Bhoga and all those things. And, uh, but uh, how Chamatkar occurs here, Bhoga is free from the individual individuality which is demolished by Sadharani Karan. When there is universalization, identification between uh, the audience and Dushyanta, then uh, the individuality is demolished. And then Bhoga gets free from it and it is available to the audience. And this bhoga is called anubhavana or vimarsa, you can say, devoid of any individuality and acquired by universalized self, which is termed as Maheshwara, as I said. In Pratyavigya, uh, it is called Maheshwara. Maheshwara is a consciousness. It is universal consciousness. Here, the process of universalization is occurring. And therefore, this consciousness is being called as Maheshwara. We may not take it as a god Maheshwara, because we have that kind of sanskara to take Maheshwara as a god. But here it is the uh, universalized supreme consciousness and its uh, uh, cognition also. Now, what kind of uh, uh, a state is being presented to the audience? Aham idam. I am this Dushyanta. He discovers now. I am this Dushyanta. Aham idam. I am this. This is Pratyavigya. And in uh, Pratyavigya Vibhruti Vimarsini, uh, volume 2, he says, Abhinavagupta says, 
एक चिदात्मा स्वातंत्र्येण स्वात्मनि जतो विश्वरूप्यम भाषयति ततो महेश्वर अंतर्निताइदंता कृत्वा पर अनुन्मुख स्वात्म विश्रांति रूप विमर्श परिपूर्ण सो विश्रांति एंड विमर्श दे बोथ आर देयर एंड विमर्श आई एक्सप्लेन थ्रू द सेंटेंस ऑफ पंडित जगन्नाथ जस्ट ए वाइल एगो एंड दिस चिदात्मा हैज ए स्वातंत्र्य दैट मींस एज वी डिस्कस्ड इट डजंट डिपेंड ऑन एनीथिंग एल्स फॉर इट्स एफलजेंस ऑल दिस थिंग्स व्हेन दे ऑल कम देन दिस एक्सपीरियंस इज nothing but a vishranti rupa and vimarsha paripurna vimarsha purna is mane punah punah anusandhanatma as panditraj said and vishranti rupa as bharata says he takes both the uh, things of course panditraj is afterwards but it is in the tradition so vimarsha uh, and vishranti these two characterize the uh, bliss of release of rasa and uh, both chamatkara and vimarsha they indicate indicate at a kind of enjoyment of enjoyment of bhavana or sambedana this sambedana itself is enjoyment and itself is enjoyed also hence in sa sutra abhinava gupta has already said uh, that uh, asman mate tu sambedana meva ananda ghanam aswadyate rasa is nothing but ananda ghana sambedana and that is being released that is our opinion says bharat and it happens in the transcendental level after the aesthetic experience in four levels means uh, transcendental level is the fifth one before that sense level imaginative level emotive level and cathartic level i am not going into them they will take much more time but uh, crossing all these through all these levels then only in the uh, transcendental level an audience gets the aesthetic experience uh, here there may be some objection that why we are uh, taking everything transcendental spiritual all those things uh, at the end as conclusion i will i will desire to uh, discuss uh, for 5 minutes and this bhavana is charvana which is contemplation by samajika charvana and bhavana they are mean uh, synonym now uh, in natya this contemplation is not on the actors but on the original actor and his behavior now this bhavana or charvana is not on the actor on the stage it is rather on the original character and his behavior which is being projected here and uh, now question arises how can it happen when in front we are seeing actor how can we uh, have the charvana of the original one this is not possible then uh, the one example of uh, in abhinav bharati uh, very interesting example he gives uh, abhinav gupta he says when we worship when we meditate before an idol what happens are we meditating on that stone idol or the thing or power this idol represents and he says that worshipper doesn't uh, worship the idol but the god represented by that idol and uh, his exact word i may uh, read out nahi tatra sindura divyo vasudeva so million etc are smeared on uh, the idol of vasudeva nahi tatra sindura dimayo vasudeva iti smaraniya pratipatti hi apitu तदुपाय द्वारेण यस दैट इज ए मीडियम आइडल इज ए मीडियम बट तद उपाय द्वारेण थ्रू दैट अति स्फुटीभूत संकल्प गोचर देवता विशेषो ध्यानम फलकृत द गॉड व्हिच विल हु विल गिव द रिजल्ट ऑफ देयर प्रेयर दैट दैट एंटिटी इज बीइंग मेडिटेटेड और वर्शिपड तद्वद नाट प्रक्रिया सेम इज द केस इन ड्रामाटर्जी आल्सो we concentrate on the real rama although medium is on the stage and he is the actor that is his uh, and, and the charvana is a continuous contemplation this contemplation on the real rama through this actor rama it is a kind of continuous process of contemplation come enjoyment 
of the meaning of poetry beyond bachyartha now how he will enjoy it he says that uh, uh, beyond uh, enjoyment uh, um, beyond uh, this bachyartha whatever dialogue delivery is being given on the stage or on the screen the audience goes beyond that that is why abhivanjana bado is being presented by abhinav gupta so vyangyartha is being accepted and the real meaning is being taken up kavyartha bhuto jo artha ha tasya bhavana vachyati rekena anavarata charbana that the bhavana is a contemplation of the real meaning the suggested meaning beyond the vachyartha or the denoted meaning now um, i am going to conclude in 5 minutes now my uh, i am going to tackle this question why we always take alaukikata in uh, the context of rasa and its uh, release satva dreka dakhanda suprakasha ananda chinmay vedyantar sparsha shunya brahma swada sahodara why do we said all that everywhere brahma chinmay and uh, satva all those things and in uh, abhinava says that uh, leave aside this uh, spiritual thing transcendental thing or whatever is uh, going on stage let us uh, leave out we we'll let us come to the practical sphere of our life there is one pot before us it's uh, knowledge it's recognition is also happening in a spiritual way in a transcendental way we are not able to trace that but it is there he says tatha cha ghato mama sphurati iti ko artha now this ghato is shining before me ghato vilasati what is the meaning it of it madyam sphuranam spandanam avishta tadrupa tadrupatam apin apanna eva again he brings his own philosophy spanda and sphurana sphurana is abhasa as you have already discussed and this spandana in me that uh, touches the object ghata madyam sphuranam spandanam abishtah tadrupatam apanna my Uh, mind we can say in a simple word my mind takes the shape of that ghata uh, that pot therefore tadrupatam apanna how it all happened is it a miracle no. he says no chinmaya twat because my soul is chinmaya it can take any shape and since i wish to cognize ghata my chit to the shape of that ghata same thing happens in uh, drama or in cinema therefore this there is nothing alaukikata here we say alaukika because we are dealing with uh, kavya and natya ratyadi udbodhaka loke vibhavaha kavya natya yo kavya and natya are alaukika paribesha that we accept and and therefore we should not uh, say that uh, we should not claim that everything is being spiritualized here because the total process of cognition and contemplation is spiritual by nature whatever kind of uh, uh, contemplation may be very secular contemplation you are doing like uh, ghata maham pasyami but uh, that is also having a spiritual core in its otherwise there cannot be any cognition and uh, in ishwar pratyavigya vibhuti vimarsin this uh, famous sentence is there madhyam sphuranam स्पंदनम स्पंदनमोचिन्मयोचनोचन तन्मयी भवन युक्त्या तत विभावानु भावोचित भावोचित चित्तवृत्ति वासनानु रंजित स्व संविद आनंद चरवणा गोचर अर्थो रसात्मा नाउ व्हेन ए सामाजिक बिकम्स रसात्मा व्हाट हैपेंस टू हिम 
ना विभाव अनुभाव बोधनात परम अदाट व्हेन ही अंडरस्टैंड्स विभाव एंड देयर एक्टिविटीज अनुभाव देन तन्मय भवन जुक्त्या देन देयर इज आइडेंटिफिकेशन देयर इज यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन जनरलाइजेशन विभाव अनुभाव उचित चित्त वृत्ति वासना अनुरंजित व्हेन देयर इज विभाव अनुभाव एंड फिटिंग टू दैट उचित ए स्टेट ऑफ माइंड व्हिच इज स्मियर्ड विथ वासना अवरनल डिजायर दैट इज कम विथ अस थ्रू द ट्रांसमाइग्रेशन वासनाया अनुरंजित स्मियर्ड विथ दैट डिजायर स्व संविद आनंद चरणा गोचरो अर्थ द ऑब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज बीइंग ऑब्जेक्टिफाइड बिफोर द चरणा और द रिलीज आनंद चरणा रिलीज ऑफ ब्लिस थ्रू द स्व संविद through the chit that is rasatma nothing else in dhonalok lochan also he says that in very very practical thing and in dramaturgy also the roots of cognition are bhaya the transcendental paths and we cannot we do not feel it so it's not that not because we don't feel we should not recognize it's not the case and he discovers how sarvatmika sambit when our chit or sambit is being capable of being generalized when this uh, uh, sarvatmika sambit or omnipresent consciousness undergoes a state of reflection of light rays on one another like the rays reflected on a series of mirror and he not only gave a secular uh, uh, example like ghata maham pasyami i i look at the pot he also says you see how Uh, we can experiment this uh, uh, sarvatmika sambit without which we cannot uh, uh, cognize rasa we cannot cognize any object also and in tantra loka chapter 28 he says that uh, sambit sarvatmika deha bhedat sankuchita anusar tusa meloke anyunya sanghatta sambittu pratibimba vikasara vikasara means vikasita utchalan nija rasmiugha रश्मि नाम ओघ समूह संबित सु प्रतिबिंबित बहुदर्पण बत दीप्त सर्व पेतद जत नाउ इफ देयर इज वन कैंडल एंड देयर आर मेनी मेनी मिरर्स देयर विल बी बॉम्बार्डमेंट्स ऑफ वी कैन से लाइट रेज सेम इज हैपनिंग हियर व्हेन वी एम्प्लॉय आवर संबित व्हेन वी मेक इट्स सर्वात्मिका और यूनिवर्सलाइज फॉर रिलीज एंड देर आर मेनी मेनी बासनास एंड संबित पार्टिकल्स वी कैन से देर इज ए संघट क्लास अमंग देम एंड देर अकोर से प्रतिबिंब विकास ऑफ प्रतिबिंब डेवलपमेंट ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन एंड देर फोर उत्सलन ए कम आउट ओवरफ्लो nija rasmiugh that sambit is being uh, rather uh, metaphorically uh, said as a rasmi uh, a kind of uh, brightness and uh, ray and its samuha sambitsu pratibimbita those rays coming from the stage they get pratibimbita reflected on sambit on the chit of the audience so uh, in this way it is just as it happens so like a candle in the middle of so many mirrors and therefore uh, it is not that uh, uh, alloikikata is being intentionally used to philosophize the uh, process of uh, dramaturgical process of release it's not the case rather we cannot uh, escape the trans- transcendentalism even in our day to day recognition and cognitions in this way uh, uh, primarily abhinav gupta has written many many good treatises connecting to uh, dramaturgy and pratyabhigya doctrines and they are quite helpful a combined study if done at all i don't know whether it has been done uh, will definitely add to the bank of knowledge in uh, uh, sanskrit rhetorics poetics and dramaturgy thank you very much and thank you very much for inviting me inviting me uh, special thanks to professor mulli madhavan for uh, uh, remembering me for an for an occasion like this i sincerely thank uh, uh, kandalur sala and will meet again definitely vande sanskrit mataram 
नमस्ते धन्यवाद they have uh, posted their uh, some doubts or additions or omissions or commissions whatever it may be in the box yes yes uh, is it is it visible in your uh, the from there can you no, get it and no, see sir. please huh? please uh, speak out sir i do, i'm not able to see them you cannot see ah no then uh, we we can ask from people uh, we can ask people to we have only few people so they can ask directly the questions no doubt about it okay. if they have anything okay. to clarify they can okay. i uh, now the the paper is put for uh, discussion uh, so i request the participants to uh, clear their doubts or if they want to add something new to the presentation that also they are free to do that and uh, any type of corrections or uh, improvisation whatever it may be the scholarly audience can do it and this is a time for that all are invited oh yes good evening sir um, yes um, sir can i ask some clarificatory questions first before we move oh, on sure. to the discussions okay sure um so first i would like to uh, ask you about uh, about the term kashmir shaivism because the mm -hmm. contemporary scholars like uh, alexis anderson etc would say that kashmir shaivism is a, a misleading term uh, nowadays uh, so uh, what is your uh, opinion about that sir you see the successors of ambedkar who the cyber philosophy of this madam, kind ma madam please introduce yourself and uh, ask. yes 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 uh, the co the questioners they must introduce themselves first and then ask the questions so nirmala madam you please uh, info i mean you introduce yourself and uh, uh, ask dr nirmala okay yeah. okay so uh, dr nirmala actually kashmir shaivism is coined by Uh, common uh, lay scholars like us to understand the thing but it is not the exact representation of the philosophy that i accept but then uh saiba monism or saiba dwaya saiba dvaita vada all these things are also there but uh, they are not generally accepted by commoners so to for their uh, uh, convenience we say kashmiri savizing because it uh, uh, flourished in the soil of kashmir mostly and most of the scholars are kashmirians pratyavigya is just a small part of it okay sir uh, i have one more question uh, you have told about hatal ollata and he was a hardcore monist i write and he also wrote a vivruti on spanda karika actually in these literatures we find that spanda karika has four commentaries and two of them by chema raja the disciple of abhinav gupta and yeah. uh, two more are one from utpala uh, bhatta utpala and the other one is by kallata himself uh, so uh, uh, sir is it available now uh, this commentary by bhatta lalata no it is there in tradition only it's not available okay okay can you can you say about the reference of uh, this statement sir uh, i mean uh, where could okay, i find that uh, this bhatalolata has to my commentary on over the oh yes 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 reference uh, Pro professor mishra uh, she okay. may be asking perhaps uh, through quotations we are knowing just like we know about bhatanayaka uh, because uh -huh. we have only some, some quotations about his uh, from his text that's all like that if you have any quotations then you can clarify that uh i don't think the, this this part a direct sanskrit quotation i can supply but in english i will uh, uh, give a book whether it is with me now on the table gt despande 
जी टी देश पांडे ऑन कश्मीरी साइबिजिम ही डिस्क्राइब्स दिस कैट इन इंग्लिश विदाउट एनी सांस्कृत रेफरेंस In in many places, uh, I gave Sanskrit references, but for this, because Bhattalolla is uh, very obscure, nothing is available from him, so we cannot yes. get uh, uh, his sentences. Actually, it is the tradition which says that he says like this. Okay. But G T Deshpande may help you. G T Deshpande may help you. Yeah, I am Ajitan. Yes. And uh, thank you, sir, yes. for giving a wonderful lecture. I have two doubts. Okay. One, first, I will ask before asking the doubt, I will uh, make a few general remarks that the Kashmir Shaivism, the term Kashmir Shaivism, is firstly used by um, what was his name? Just a minute. Uh, it was J C Chatterjee. J C Chatterjee. J C Chatterjee in nineteen eighteen. Nineteen forty. Yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, through Kashmir Shaivism. That was the first reference to Kashmir Shaivism, and uh, in the text of Kashmir Shaivism, you will see Paradoyavada, Shaivadoyavada, etc. So, uh, many such terms are there. And uh, my doubt is, you have made reference to malas and aesthetic experience. What you have you have been saying is that while experiencing this aesthetic experience, your malas will get removed. in order to experience in order to have a real experience of is uh, this uh, res, uh, poetical what we call ananta first mm-hmm. you have to have your uh, uh, malas removed i am not going to uh, mane exert my effort to remove the malas that is not necessary you my duty is just to go and sit on a chair and whatever will happen on the stage they will yeah. gradually ward off my malas in mind uh, there that is my question what is the meaning avaran that is the avaran what mala, what the text says mala is, mala. is that according to the philosophy of prathyabhinna avartrika uh, malas are removed by initiation or shakti pada that is the no, only no, means is by which the malas are telling, telling, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah that is what the philosophy says but you are saying yeah. while watching a drama your malas will get removed how this can yes. be connected ha huh. i connect it i will connect this with two people one is panditra jagannath another is vishwanath the author of sahitya darpana now vishwanath says a satya dreka will happen when i see a drama at that time a satya dreka will happen how, how can it happen satya will be aroused only when there is no raja and no tam no rajas no tamas they are the malas and they are being cleansed off and then satva arises rajas tamobhyam aspustang manah satva mihotyate and this is one thing means we we cannot bring things whatever is demanded in spiritual sphere the same thing happen in dramaturgical sphere that is not the case secondly avarana uh, bhang the phrase avarana bhang he says panditra jagannathin rasaganga thar avarana is nothing but this mal this malas making avaranas the covers and when i uh, see rama or sita dushyanta uh, rama and sita dushyanta and sakuntala etc stage and their uh, anubhav etc gradually these malas are wadded off it is not that spiritually they are wadded off temp- completely and permanently not the case on the stage that is why it is being said as long as vibhava etc are there raso is existent when they go means when i come out of the hall again the same thing i am same ignorant man with malas therefore mala the uh, wording of of malas in the spiritual sphere is different but uh, its influence is there and uh, our uh, dramaturgists have uh, uh, designed a way or rather discovered that this really happens and uh, you were mentioning about uh, the comments made by jagannatha but he is uh, he is uh, explaining the uh, aesthetic experience from a totally different point of view not from pratyabhitnya point of view and uh, he says about this avarna bhanga etc my question is anywhere in the, his literature abhinav das abhinav gupta mention this avarna bhanga which is much connected to the aesthetic experience 
no very avarna bhanga ward may not be there but uh, warding of malas etc are there even not only in tantra loka we, here we can get in uh, our abhinava bharati also at present readily i do not have may, those may, uh, may, but, uh, professor arun ji professor arun ji may i introduce yeah. dr ajitan uh, yes abhinava gupta is more uh, using the word uh, this uh, vibhavadi charvana Uh, he says that he says that vibhavadi charvana or avarna bhanga uh, or avarna bhanga is uh, i think that has been mentioned by jagannath pandita uh, actually yes, uh, vibhavadi yes. charvana he says yeah charvana is there and uh, yeah. this what, what bhavana what i think already yeah. said that this bhavana no, no, and that, uh, I, please he he says that when when uh, you are uh, 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 actually bhattanayaka in one place he says that he is the first man to bring out this sadharani karana uh, then abhinav gupta uh, made it uh, more powerful and uh, more in detail he discussed the, 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 the this yeah. this doctrine actually um bhatanayaka says that satodreka prakash anandamaya sambind visranti satatvena bhogena bhujyate so satodreka prakash anandamaya sambind visranti satatvena he uses so there he says hmm. that the satodreka happens so once this satodreka happens the, the malas will go that is what uh, professor arun ji has uh, is arguing yes and uh, uh, the, another phrase the mala mala is in the form of uh, tama and raja yeah and sattva is free from all malas yeah and when sattva draga comes the automatically the uh, raja and tama the, the malas call, um, 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 out of uh, rajas and tamas that they will disappear hmm. and the phrase avarna bhanga Uh, can also be represented by bita vigna the phrase bita vigna used by um, by abhinav gupta in pratyavigya vimarsini therefore uh, idea is there avarna bhanga phrase may not be there but bita vigna is almost the same bita vigna uh, actually also... actually uh, actually jagannath pandita i think he has coined this word i think so because he says that yatha sharavadina pihito divah uh, that context he starts in this way with the yeah. sharava if you close a, a deepa a light when you remove that sharava uh, the light uh, um, becomes visible and through that light it is vis- all other things are being visible uh, uh, being uh, what we call light and so that is so he says in that way yeah. so they uh, yeah. so he there he uses this word avarna bhanga perhaps so but uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a uh, vibhavadi charvana and also veda vigna Satyadreka. these two things are uh, mm-hmm. synonyms in this uh, field they are synonyms yeah, yeah. yes uh, but uh, one thing is that to... as professor arun arun ranjan ji has told you cannot completely mm-hmm. uh, put the same yardstick and same explanation of uh, shaiva dvaita or shaiva philosophy in Um, are you saying we are not putting... no nobody can do that nobody can do that we are not taking no. all the yard six of uh, sarvabhuta and putting it in dramatic sorry what i yeah, am saying yeah. is we are that... taking inspirations i yeah. i just showed the roots where inspirations are uh, flowing to dramatic yeah what i was saying that is I... that nowhere in pratyabhijna literature you will find the word avarna bhanga and this avarna that is that is what that is yeah, what we have told already yes, sir said it is coined that by is uh, it is referred to by uh, jagannath pandita and the jagannath pandita's of uh, pandita's explanation of abhinav gupta's uh, interpretation of jasa sutra has no connection with pratyabhijna philosophy he is uh, interpreting from That's vedanti it. point yeah. of view so hmm. how you bring while you talking about the pratyabhijna philosophy and its influence on dasa sutra vyakhyana how then how you bring jagannatha into discussion that is my question i brought jagatha into discussion just to clarify the very idea of mala and idea of satvadreka and satvadreka can be explained through a process of wording of malas or breaking the avaranas so avarana bhanga phrase 
just helps to understand Satyadreka and wording of of malas. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, in fact, in fact, avarna bhanga, the word avarna bhanga is being used in the context of rasa and kabya. Kabya is alokhi kono and whether uh, or kabya, both are alokhi ko and rasa is avail from that. And in that context, when he deciphers what is poetry, in that uh, context, he uses this word. Therefore, we cannot claim that, uh, no, no, it is not there in the context of Natya. No. It is no, the same. Is, this, this, this is Kabya applicable. Natya. Yeah, yeah. This is applicable yeah. in the in other case also. Because in several places, Abhinavagupta's ideas are being taken and presented by Jagannath Pandita with a fresh uh, uh, um, background and uh, presented with a novel way. Yeah. Uh, that is that is the novel novelty is the uh, the the core uh, character of the Jagannath Pandita's presentation. Uh, uh, he presents it, but actually, when you go into the in the uh, at root level, grassroots level, when you go in in the uh, what we call the theories explained by uh, Jagannath Pandita, you can very well trace out Abhinav uh, uh, ideas in that. Uh, I I want to mention one one matter that. Uh, when he Abhinavgupta, he presents the uh, Rasa Sutra of uh, Abhinavgupta in two different ways. He says that Rityadi Vishishta Chideva Rasa. In another place, he says Chideva Chind Vishishta Rityadi Reva Rasa. Yeah. So in one place, yeah. so Visheshna Visheshya Bhava is being changed and explained in that way. Hmm. But finally, uh, as a scholar, he, he is successful in explaining. The Visheshna and Visheshya are the same and there is no difference. So that he has, at the, at the final stage, he has uh, explained all those things. But there you can see, uh, but if you go through the entire literature of Abhinav Gupta, you cannot see these things. These are, these are novel yes, presentations of uh, Jagannath Pandita. Huh. He has huh. made his own presence. But yeah, 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 yeah that is. But but, but uh, all these presentations finally uh, um, um, give justification and also a befitting presentation of Abhinavgupta. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, sir, I yes, think sir. Uh, the central notion of philosophy and uh, philosophy of aesthetics of Abhinavgupta is uh, the concept of samatkara, uh, and uh, this samatkara is hridayam gamata, and uh, hridaya is uh, very much equal to the vimarsha. And Vimarsha is, uh, uh, the nature of Vimarsha is Nairmalya. Uh, then we can say that there is lack of Mala. Uh, we can connect it uh, in this way, I think. Okay. Uh, nature of Huda is Nairmalya. <laughs> nature of Huda is Nairmalya. <laughs> but when there is a power, nature of, what is the nature of Atma? Nitya, Suddha, Chutta, Suddha, Chaitanya, Sobhava. Nitya Suddha Chaitanya Sobhava. Uh, but think, sir, in, is, in, is in context, context, it's different. Uh, actually, we can't... No, no, no. Uh, it's the same thing. You see, you see, spirituality and uh, dramaturgy, they, or literature, they go parallel. They do not uh, combine themselves, but they go parallel and take inspirations from one another. Uh, therefore, Atma is described in such way. But uh, why then Atma is called Pasu here in this uh, system? It is because he is Dukhi, he is Asuddha, he is uh, Agnya, Agnana. So uh, how can you then explain this thing? So there is actually no contradiction. Atma may be by core Nitya Suddha Buddha, but on it there is a kind of uh, uh, cover of uh, uh, Nescience, Agnana. There is a cover of Nescience. Professor um, Mishra, I, I have a direct question. Uh, yeah. This Ananda, which you which we uh, derive uh, at the time of uh, Rasa realization, is it uh, an Andakarana Vritti or Anandakarana Vritti? Uh, How we can say according one? to Pratyabhidnya philosophy? Uh huh. Is it a yeah, Antakarna Vrti or Ananda Karna Vrti? Antakarna Vrti. Antakarna Vrti and other one? Ananda Karna Vrti. Not, not Antakarna Vrti. 
Whether Ananda is Antakarana Bhutti? Is it the question? No. Ananda is Ananda an Antakarana Bhutti or Ananda Karana Bhutti? Is it is it is, is it beyond Antakarana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Ananda Karana. Okay. Now I understood. Yeah. <laughs> now what what is being said here? It is being said that uh, that Ananda we are not getting from the uh, actors. They are just, I read those uh, sentences, they are just the dwaras, madhyamas. Yes. And yes, they no. do something, they do something by which samatkara is inside and ananda is inside. It is not in antakarana. Antakarana is mano, buddhi and chitta, etc. Yes, three, yes. three things are there. But it is not antakarana. It is directly atma, the soul, the self. So in self, in self, Ananda is there, Chamatkara is there. But we are being able to avail it because of the cover on it. And uh, the aesthetics say, the science of aesthetics says uh, that when whatever is going on the stage, they ward off that uh, uh, cover and Ananda which is there in the soul, it is spiritual by nature not uh, psychic or antakarana by nature, antakaranic yeah. by nature. It's not antakaranic by nature. It is spiritual yeah. by nature. It is in the spirit, in the soul and cover. And that cover is added off by Vibhava, oh. Bhava, etc. It is not in antakarana. Yes. Thank you, Professor Deshwar. Uh, both is Shamatkar, Shamatkar. You have given uh, uh, excellent uh, answers. Uh, I am very much uh, 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 thankful to you because you have given uh, uh, a scholarly, uh, uh, scholarly lecture. Uh, sir, 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 please introduce you, yourself, sir. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Professor Arun Misra from the Department of Hindi, Vishwabharti Santiketra. Oh, very good. Uh, ha, ha, uh, happy to hear you, sir. Professor Mr. given a wonderful, a wonderful lecture uh, on the subject Patrika Darshan, which is connected with uh, literature, uh, philosophy, and uh, also Kashmiri Savijin. Uh, simply, I want to know from Mr. Uh, Professor Mr. that what is the difference? Uh, it, is, it is a simple question. Uh, Patrika Darshan and uh, General Shaiva Darshan. Kashmiri Saivadarshan and Saivadarshan, what is the difference? Hmm. Simple question. Uh, perhaps I said one thing. Maya, they have included so yardstick of Maya, we cannot uh, take to differentiate. But I said, uh, uh, what, what I said, uh, this thing is not, not there in Advaita. I said, um, yes, yes. that is the root of the difference between both the brothers. And uh, you see, Advaita fully depends on Vedas, Vedic knowledge from Upanishads. Advaita is nothing but a, a, we can say, a summarization, a concretization of uh, the streaks of uh, ideas in Upanishads, stored in Upanishads. It doesn't subscribe to any agamic view. It only subscribes to nigamic view. This is Advaita. But here in uh, uh, Saibadvaya or uh, Pratyavigyan, they have both Agama and Nigama. In the beginning itself, I said, but I just forget that uh, small thing I said about that. But this is the gross difference between both. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, thank you. May, may my my uh, special uh, thanks to uh, Professor uh, uh, Murali Madhavan. <laughs> uh, Namaskar, sir, Namaskar. Uh, for his inaugural speech, <laughs> and, uh, 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 we are also happy to hear you, sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Namaskar. Uh, Professor Sadanand Das. Yeah. He's Professor Das. Sir. Professor Das, uh, please talk. Yeah. Thank he you. He is very talking much. from Germany. Thank you. My, yeah, oh. I'm Sadanand Das uh, from Leipzig University, Germany. Okay. okay Thank you very much, Professor Murali Madhavan, for organizing this lecture series and having the lecture of Professor Mishra today, which was very interesting lecture. And thank you very much, Professor Mishra, 
for giving such a wonderful lecture today with full of information. I have only a few comments to give, not, I, have, I do not have any questions. First of all, um, I would like to say there are uh, uh, three, four articles which are written by Professor Bettina Boehmer on aesthetics yeah. and also Kashmiri Shaivism. One is called Beauty as Ananda Shakti, uh, which is very interesting article. And uh, I think originally it was published in Saundarya, The Perception and Practice of Beauty in India, edited by uh, H.V. Dahejia and M. Paranjape, uh, published in New Delhi by Sambad India Foundation in 2003. Sure. And then there is another article she has written, the approach, uh, sorry, aesthetics of mysticism or mysticism of aesthetics, the approach of Kashmir Shaivism, where she has also discussed uh, uh, at large about uh, the theme of uh, aesthetics and how it is integrated in Kashmir Shaiva philosophy. And then the, she has another article also um, on Bhavana, Creative Contemplation, Bhavana in the Vijjana Bhairava Tantra. All these articles are uh, greatly discussing about the uh, nature of aesthetics uh, and uh, uh, which is found in Kashmiri Shaiva philosophy. Um, then there was a question in Very the nice. beginning about Kashmiri Shaiva term, why we call it Kashmiri Shaivism. Of course, uh, there were already, there was already a discussion on this as it was uh, used by J.C. Chatterjee first time and it has been in use uh, by all of us modern scholars. Perhaps uh, it is easy to use, but traditionally, if we think in our Kashmiri Shaiva philosophical texts, we don't see anywhere the term appearing as a Shaiva, Kashmiri Shaiva Darshana uh, as such. Uh, what we call Kashmiri Shaivism or Kashmiri Shaiva Darshana, in fact, it is a group of five schools of philosophy, which is called uh, uh, Spanda school or Spanda Shastra, Pratyavijna school or Pratyavijna Shastra, Trika school or Trika Shastra, or even it is called Trika Shasana, then Krama school or Krama Shastra, and Kaula school or Kaula Shastra. So all these five schools, which uh, make Kashmiri Shaivism as such. And they are all, we all call them as Shastra or Sasana. So there is no such term Kashmiri Shaivism, but by uh, all of us modern scholars, uh, it has been used now Kashmiri Shaivism. Perhaps it is easier. And Professor Mistra has very clearly and in details discussed a lot of points uh, uh, in this, uh, in his lecture. Uh, I just want to make a few um, points here that uh, as far as Kashmiri Shaivism and uh, or uh, Pratyavijna school uh, and aesthetics is concerned, I think the aesthetic, the roots of aesthetics that is rooted in this Pratyavijna uh, school. And uh, as we know, every philosophy uh, has a set of basic metaphors which serve as, as which serve to illustrate the uh, philosophical truths. So in this branch of philosophy or in this school of philosophy, also we find a, a set of uh, 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 terms uh, which are used as a metaphors like uh, uh, Professor Misra has already mentioned, uh, Abhasa, uh, we have also painting, uh, drama, uh, and uh, um, artist, uh, or also Bimba Pratibimba Bada, um, then uh, uh, Nartaka, uh, for example, um, the metaphor of painting that illustrates the idea of Abhasa and of the world as an image like a, a, a Jagat Chitra, which is created by the divine artist. And here the divine artist is none other than Lord Shiva. Even, in fact, uh, I remember Professor Bettina Boimer has also uh, uh, written, or maybe it was her thesis, PhD thesis, um, the, um, the creation as a play. 
so the whole creation uh, is uh, understood as a play of lord shiva and in fact uh, um, when we think of this creation there are many ideas found about the uh, idea of creation creation is in kashmir shaivism creation is not considered that uh, we buy materials like we go to the supermarket we buy um, wood uh, nails and screws and then we bring back uh, home and then we fix uh, all these materials and made make out of it a chair or a table or something like that it is not um, uh, creation is it is not created out of nothing but creation is a manifestation uh, the, the entire universe was inside shiva and when he wanted to uh, bring it out then we saw it was manifested and then uh, it the creation uh, happened so it is not created out of nothing but it is simply manifestation it creation was all the time it was every it was there but when shiva brought it out then we saw it and we say it is universe and then at the end he puts it back uh, which we call pralaya or we call sanghara in fact in uh, uh, in our uh, tradition uh, the word sanghara srishti sthiti sanghara is very uh, often used but sanghara according to my understanding we translate it as destruction it is one of the meanings but in this context it is not destruction it is putting back putting back together na srushti sthiti sanghara like we have also the drama of bhatta narayana beni sanghara beni sanghara yeah, is yeah. not the destruction of beni it is putting yeah. together yeah, so in yeah. this context srushti sthiti sanghara shiva is not at all a destroyer so we completely misunderstand this storm uh, so this is one point also but then in that other, in the, uh, in this context of uh, metaphors we have also other metaphors like painting the implication of the metaphor of painting which is obviously the beauty of the work of art uh, that produces a sense of wonder chamatkara this is another terminology uh, in the context of aesthetics which we can discuss uh, for a long time and this wonder which is created it leads the observer to a state of identification yeah, with identification of shiva lord shiva and then the entire bimba pratibimba bada which also professor misra has mentioned in his lecture yeah, bimba pratibimba bada is related not only uh, to an image uh, in a mirror but uh, i think to the metaphor of painting and then there is another uh, second artistic metaphor which is used uh, uh in the context of drama that is jagannatya uh, um, uh in of course in abhinava bharati you will find this metaphor very frequently very often uh, uh by acharya abhinav gupta uh, but also we we find this uh, metaphor in the shiva sutras of vasu gupta where he says uh, there is a sutra Uh, i think uh, i forget the number of the sutra but in the uh, uh, um, uh, shiva sutra you find we find a, a sutra called nartaka atma the self is an actor and and uh, uh, dancer itself there is another uh, terminology also bhumika which is very interesting terminology in the context of kashmiri shaivism and uh, 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 aesthetics so all these uh, metaphors they very clearly uh, 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 show us the integration of uh, philosophy as well as aesthetics as far as kashmiri shaiva philosophy is concerned and uh, particularly pratyabhigya uh, philosophy is concerned professor misra has very clearly explained many points so i would like to thank uh, professor misra and professor murali madhavan for organizing such a wonderful lecture and giving me an opportunity to take part in this thank you very much thank you professor das uh, thank, thank you. you thank you professor das uh, i i had uh, seen uh, betina ji only once uh, at your residence in banaras uh, yes. she had a very yes. rich library as i remember and yes. uh, i would like to see those articles uh, uh, sometime i may uh, try to collect some details about it uh, from you yeah, i may from i may send you also. i may uh, have some copies of this i may send you 
kindly please and uh, about the jagannathya etc uh, let me say one thing that uh, in kashmiri sahib they had a, a good source of inspiration uh, from sankhya sankhya philosophy so in the text sankhya karika perhaps there are more than 10 more than one dozen instances uh, where the karikas uh, metaphorize drama jagannatya and all those things natya thing is once and again it is coming therefore uh, they might have taken it that inspiration might have come from sankhya karika itself sankhya karika as a text it's quite uh, old text definitely before mm-hmm. 7th century ad thank you very much very beautiful uh, in sankhya karika uh, you can sankhya. directly see karigas in sankhya karika uh, yes. you can directly see several yeah, yeah. karigas which are uh, equating uh, prakriti and purusha yeah, yeah, as yeah. actors on the stage actors on the yeah, stage yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. Any other questions? Otherwise, we will wind up the session. Sir, Long I time ask, we are discussing. May I, may I ask yes. One yes. Question? You can ask. You can ask. Um, you were saying that there is a combination of uh, nigama and agama in Pratibhijna philosophy, and uh, my question again is: Where do you have? this uh, vedic ideology in pratibhijna philosophy if see any chapter or page you take there you will get vedic ideology it is not uh, about a yagna not about uh, the uh, um, uh, gods like agni and all those things beyond that also many many things are there and there can be a thesis on it the vedic inspiration in kashmiri sahibism so um, i don't think there is any point on giving a talk it can be another talk of course but uh, the talk itself will be shallow because it is quite immanent ostensible this is quite ostensible that it has vedic influence yes very good any other questions i think there is a uh, uh, there is a, a mantra coming in uh, upanishads which says paranchi khani vyatruna swayam bhuh tasmat parang pasyati nantaratman avrutta chakshuh amrutatvam ichchan kaschit samyata kaschit dhiraah pratyatmanam ichchat avrutta chakshuh amrutatvam ichchan exactly yeah so yeah, i yeah. think this is, this also uh, explains the connection of uh, vedic and kashmiri so shiva ideas there are many many there are many references ha huh. many there are many references and uh, this just uh, came to my mind immediately ha uh, taitri upanishad isavanishad many other upanishads have yeah. been quoted throughout the kashmiri and shiva literature yes yes i mean here we find the term khani kham in the sense of indriyas and in vigyana uh, bhagavata tantra we have plenty of uh, dharanas which uh, connects to the practice of shunya so these are all there are you will one can find a lot of such references uh, but this just came to my mind immediately yeah yeah thank you very much okay i think uh, uh, is there any anybody uh, want to contribute anything or uh, rather any clarification otherwise uh, we will wind up the function it was a wonderful experience we had that uh, a scholar like uh, professor arun ranjan mishra from west bengal no no <laughs> he, he, uh, he is talking and uh, our association we were together in several several national international seminars okay. and uh, okay. uh, we were also always keeping our friendship and uh, Uh, i am very happy that uh, he responded our invitation and uh, uh, delivered a very scholarly speech today uh, and it is a vast ocean you cannot uh, with half an hour or yeah. one hour you cannot uh, bring everything under that uh, canopy so but uh, he has tried his level best uh, to justify his title uh, of speech we have given in the uh, program that he has done wonderfully Uh, without uh, he is a, really a master of that subject no doubt about it he has done it so we are happy i have interest in it yeah yeah so 
Uh, now we will go pass on to Dr. Uh, Nirmala. I request Dr. Nirmala, a good scholar in Kashmir Shaivism, and uh, she asked very sensible questions here. Uh, she is our stu pet student yeah, yeah. in the Kaledi University. We have uh, our PhD students mm -hmm. like uh, Dr. Nirmala and Dr. Ajitan who spoke here, uh, raised the questions, mm -hmm. uh, very sensible questions. Uh, and uh, it made yeah. alive, alive uh, the entire uh, uh, session. Natural, natural. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I request it Dr. Nirmala to... Gave... Surely, surely. I request Dr. Nirmala to present the citation to uh, Professor Arunajan Mishraji. Dr. Nirmala. Thank you, sir. With great honor and respect, Kantarlo Shala highly commends Professor Arunaranjan Mishra for his outstanding contributions and exemplary work in Vedic literature as a Sanskrit scholar, writer, teacher, guide, and philosopher. Professor Arunaranjan Mishra is the professor and head department of Sanskrit, Pali, and Prakrit, Bhasha Bhavana, Vishwabharati, Shanti Niketan. He passed MA in Sanskrit from Uttal University in 1982 with a specialization in classical literature and MPhil in 1985 uh, by the University of Pune and later the degree of PhD in 1988 by the University of Pune for the thesis, the Nyaya concept of cause and effect relationship. He is one of the national advisors of Sahitya Academy for the academic award in Sanskrit Executive Body Member of All India Oriental Conference 2015-16, Haridwar and 2017-18, Somnath. He is also a life member of DRG Bharati, Allahabad, Indian Intellectual Traditions, CASS Pune, Sagarika, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh, AIOC Pune, Founder, General Secretary and Life Member of Eastern India Oriental Conference, Bhubaneswar. Professor Mishra has been awarded by Vishwa Bharati Samman, uh, sorry, Vyasa Bharati Samman in 2015, Maharshi Vyasadev National Research Institute, Veda Vyasa, Rurkela, Odisha, Best Citizen Award in 2014, presented by International Publishing House, New Delhi, Vikram Kalidasa Puraskar uh, for Traces of Mekhadutam in Bhamahas Kavyalankara by Kalidas Academy and Vikram University, Ujjain. Sraghara Nadi Prize on Poetology of Brahmavaivarta Purana uh, at the All India Oriental Conference, Jammu in 2006. Mrs. Annapurna and Aakke Sharma Prize on Modernity and Contemporaneity in Sanskrit Writings at All India Oriental Conference, Varanasi in 2004. Sahitya Patra Puraskar for Poetry, Gandhi Center of Science and Human Values, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, Bangalore in 1989. And Shiksha Gaurav Samman by alumni FM Autonomous College, Balasor, Odisha in 2008. Professor Mishra was a guide for 18 research scholars for their PhDs and five research scholars for their MPhil degrees. He has completed a minor research project on loneliness in modern Sanskrit poetry, a postmodern sign, grant from Vishwa Bharati in 2013-14. He has published 20 books of research and more than 100 research papers at the national and international conferences and workshops. His creative works in Sanskrit include Tava Javadhara Manmaya Rekhasu, collection of 64 postmodern Sanskrit poems by the Benares Mercantile Corporation, Kolkata in 2018, and more than 10 works in Odia. This citation is presented to Professor Arunaranjan Mishra on Saturday, the 26th February, 2022 at Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nirmala, for presenting. And thank you for Arunaranjan Arun Ranjan Mishraji to receive it, uh, for the receipt of it. And uh, now I request Dr. Uh, Ajitan P.I., a faculty member of the Kandra Shala, to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. This is the 15th lecture under the series National Lecture Series on Indian Intellectual Tradition conducted by Kandalur Sala, an institute for higher learning and research in ancient Indian wisdom. Today's program started off with Dr. Purnima's beautiful and melodious rendition of words from Lojana commentary of Abhinav Gupta. Thank you, Dr. Purnima, for a wonderful invocation. 
It is followed by Dr. Vanaja's welcome address. Thank you, Vanaja, for welcoming all guests to today's program and being master of the ceremony. Next was presidential address given by mastermind of the program, Professor Murli Madhavan, Director in Chief, Kandalur Shala. During his presidential address, he spoke about how Pratyabhitnya philosophy permeated even at the level of aesthetics. Thank you, Murli Madhavan, sir, for short but illuminating presidential address. We are gathered here today to listen to Professor Arun Denjan Mishra, who spoke on Indian aesthetics and the roots of Pratyabhitnya doctrine. What Mishraji did is anchoring on Abhasavada, one of the central ideology of Pratyabhitnya, the whole process of aesthetics is demonstrated in a new light. Thank you, Mishraji, for your wonderful lecture in which you have thrown a new light on the whole process of aesthetic experience seen through the lens of Pratyabhitnya philosophy. He has also attempted to combine doctrines of Spanda with aesthetic experience. As we know, this is a path less explored. Much is to be done in this field. Thank you again, Arun Mishraji, for bringing this topic to discussion and enlightening us. Thank you, Mishraji. Thank you. Thank and uh, thank you, Nirmala, for presenting citation to Professor Arun Ranjan Mishra. And our audience constituted today of the scholars from within India and abroad. Particular mention may be made to Sadhananda Das, who not only participated in the lecture, but made remarkable observations. Thank you, sir, joining us and airing your observations. And thank you all who has been who have been there online and made this program a successful event. Thank you all. Thank you. I also thank everybody. <laughs> Okay, now I request Dr. Ajidan to perform Shandi Padha also. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviriam Karavahai Tejaswina Vadhi Tamastu Ma Vidyushavahai Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shanti. Thank you. Salutations to all. Thank you, Thank Professor Ranjan Mishra, Dr. Sant Das, and all, Thank you, sir. All, all great scholars assembled here. Uh, we will be, Dr. Das, we will be contacting you uh, 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 soon uh, to join <laughs> with us in our platform officially. <laughs> Thank you. That would be Thank a great you. honor for me, sir. Thank you very much. You. I, have given, you. I have written my email address here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet again. Uh, Dr. Uh, Pradeep, Pradeep Jodi, special thanks to Dr. Pradeep Jodi, the main man behind organizing this program. He is our trustee and he is the administrator of the Kandalur Shala. And uh, uh, he, he is administrating everything. So, uh, I express our, our thanks to Dr. Pradeep Jodi also. Thanks to Ajit Thank also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. meet Thank again. You. Namaskar to all. Namaskar. Thank you. We'll meet again. Thank you. We'll meet again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do. <laughs>